So if there's a population of patients who are commonly getting injured, it's runners. And in this video, we're going to break down some of the key concept as to how runners get injured, why they get injured, and of course, some simple tips to help them in practice. So if you're ready, let's dive in. Khalid here, welcome back to Clinical Physio. So in this video, let's start off with what are some of the key injuries that we see in runners? So first of all, what are the most common areas to injure in running? Well, studies have shown that the knee is the most commonly injured joint at 28%. Then we have the ankle and foot coming in at 26%, followed by the shank region at 16%. Next, what specific diagnoses do we see? Well, the most common injury amongst runners is patellofemoral pain, coming in at 17%. No wonder this condition is commonly referred to as runner's knee. Then we have Achilles tendinopathy, coming in at 10%. And then in third, medial tibial stress syndrome, coming in at 8%. When we look at the differences in injuries amongst males and females, females seem to have a higher prevalence of knee injuries at 40% compared to 31%, whereas males seem to have more prevalence of shank injuries, 21% versus 16%, and foot and ankle injuries at 26% versus 19%. So the next thing to consider could be running styles and whether or not there are factors in running styles that contribute to injury. First of all, cadence. This is the number of steps taken in a minute. And the natural assumption is that if you take more steps in a minute, it suggests that you have a shorter stride length. Then, what is stride length? This is the total distance covered during a complete gait cycle of one foot from foot strike to the next foot strike on the same foot. And then talking about foot strike, this is the position of the foot that makes contact with the ground first. 89% of runners are suggested to have a rear foot strike, where the rear of the foot hits the ground first. 10% of runners are suggested to have a midfoot strike, where the middle of the foot hits the ground first. And only 1% of runners are suggested to have a front foot strike, where the front of the foot hits the ground first. So do those factors such as cadence, stride length or foot strike actually have an impact on running injuries? Well, this brilliant paper from Hamill and Gruber from 2017 looked to see whether or not runners changing their foot strike had an impact on injuries. They concluded, and I'll read it to you, we have concluded based on examining the research literature that changing to a mid or forefoot strike does not improve running economy, does not eliminate an impact at the foot ground contact and does not reduce the risk of running related injuries. Therefore, suggesting if we change our foot strike doesn't necessarily lead to reduced injuries. A similar paper came out in 2020 by Brindle et al. in which they looked at even more factors. They concluded that when they looked at runners and their average stride time, stride length, contact time with the foot on the ground and cadence, there didn't seem to be any particular pattern between those runners who do get overuse injuries and those runners who don't get overuse injuries, suggesting that there isn't a particular pattern that might suggest a more likely injury of overuse. Research has also shown that running in a way that's comfortable for you is better than trying to change to a particular running style that you think might be more useful. And that's really important. Run how you're comfortable. We also find that a particular type of footwear is not necessary to reduce injuries. So you don't need to hyper-focus on the type of shoe, whether it be an overpronating shoe, an anti-pronating shoe, or a neutral foot position. So if you do have a patient who has had a running injury, what are some simple steps to try and help? Well, it is known that 80% of running injuries are atraumatic, not associated with a particular trauma, suggesting that 80% of injuries are linked to overuse in running. This is most likely to happen when your runner suddenly increases their distance, their speed, their intensity of running, or their frequency of running. So actually, that means that looking at the training program and trying to reduce one of those components can be a really simple measure to help reduce the risk of overuse injuries. So as a result, be prepared to really discuss your runner's training program with them. It may well be that trying to moderate the distance that they're running the speed at which they're running or the frequency of their running may well help to settle down their symptoms. One key phrase that we often use in physio is deload to reload. Reduce things and get things at a more comfortable level before gradually building back up. 
This is especially important if your runner is a novice runner who's been running less than a year because novice runners are suggested to be twice as likely to experience lower limb injuries compared to those who are more experienced and perhaps have had more experience thinking about their training program and their loads. And then there are two really important factors that we find are having more and more of an influence on running injuries. Those are number one, a lack of recovery and number two, poor nutrition. So when we think about a lack of recovery, this is where runners don't give themselves enough rest period between their runs. We also know that a lack of sleep is a big contributor to a lack of recovery because we need time and sleep in order to allow for physiological changes in our body when our patient has gone for a run. The right fuel is also incredibly important in terms of nutrition. We need protein in our body to be able to recover and allow for healing of injury, and we need carbohydrates to help us with energy. A balanced diet here is, of course, really important. We also know that having a low BMI can actually be a bigger risk factor for overuse injuries than having a slightly higher BMI. So it's really important to educate your runners that nutrition is key. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button and subscribe to the channel for all our best updates. Remember, we've got loads of information on our Instagram account at Clinical Physio and our website, clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for joining us. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.